Boy and girl superpowers, whether the creatures mean any harm and how they affect animals, are just some of the crucial details revealed in the original Bird Box book that don't make it into the movie. Yippee Kai, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and today I'm explaining seven major plot points that the Netflix film Bird Box changed from Josh Malaman's novel. Obviously, film and book spoilers ahead. If you've seen the various Daredevil Bird Box memes, you might have been struck by how the Marvel hero's superhuman radar sense would have helped him in the post-apocalyptic world of Bird Box. But the Bird Box novel actually explored a similar idea in detail, with boy and girl becoming extra sensitive to sounds and super skilled at echolocation. In the book, Mallory ruthlessly raised the two children to never open their eyes, and when they were babies, she'd stand over the pair, and when they woke up, she'd smack them with a fly swatter if they opened their eyes or reward them with food if they kept their eyes closed. In the movie, we often see boy and girl indoors with their eyes open, although there is a very short scene where we see Mallory teaching the kids to use stones to figure out how close an object is. Listen, when they're louder, you're in an open space. Do you hear that? But if they're softer, something is very close. But in the books, her training is much more extensive. In the book version of The River Trip, Mallory uses a children's heightened abilities to help her navigate by identifying sounds and nearby objects. In fact, Boy's hearing and echolocation skills are so sharp that he's able to detect when one of the creatures is nearby and when it's moved on. And both he and Girl can also sense subtle changes in Mallory's emotional state just from her breathing. By the way, in the book, Mallory is so fearful of the children accidentally looking at a creature that there's a chapter where she almost pours paint thinner into their eyes to blind them so they can't ever be tempted to see. Now, I mentioned how in the book, Mallory and the children encounter one of the creatures while on the river. It's a terrifying moment because the three of them have just been hit by a flock of suicidal birds, and Boy has just heard that something is right there with them. The thing moves around the boat and then it starts to slowly pull Mallory's blindfold off her face, but she puts her hand on the blindfold and tells the creature, no, this is mine. The creature seems to let go of the blindfold and then moves away until Boy tells her it's behind them now. This up-close encounter, which doesn't make it into the movie, raises the question of whether the creatures deliberately mean any harm. There's no doubt in the book or the film that gazing upon them is lethal to most people but the novel spends more time exploring ideas about what they really are. In the book, after the creature lets go of Mallory's blindfold, she remembers something that Tom said, which is that, maybe they mean us no harm, maybe they're surprised by what they do to us. It's an overlap, their world and ours, just an accident. What Tom seems to be suggesting is that the creatures are probably from another world, maybe even another dimension, and they accidentally arrived due to some kind of cross-dimensional rupture. Also, Book Mallory often refers to or thinks of the creatures as infinity, because as Tom also said, whatever they are, our minds can't understand them. They're like infinity, it seems. Something too complex for us to comprehend. In the movie, we get various hints as to what the filmmakers maybe thought the creatures represented, and they seem to suggest a more evil, perhaps demonic-like force. Charlie listed a series of malevolent spirits and entities during his speech about what he called the end game for humanity. And in the final scenes of the movie, the monster seemed to be actively hunting Mallory and the children in the forest, which is quite different to how it left her alone in the book when she ordered it to stop. Douglas is a new character created for the movie, and John Malkovich plays the abrasive role really well. Some of Douglas's traits are inspired from the book character Don, who, like Douglas, is generally not keen on letting new people into the house and opposes letting in both Olympia and Gary. However, in the books, Don later becomes friends with Gary, who tells Don stories about people who've opened up the blinds in their homes and suffer no harm. The pair end up discussing ideas such as a creature can't cause harm to someone who is prepared to see them. Book Mallory is very suspicious of Gary and snoops around his belongings, discovering a notebook inside his briefcase. The notebook, like Gary's drawings in the movie, reveals his state of mind, with Mallory finding sentences written left to right, right to left, top to bottom, and even in spirals. She also discovers some ideas in the notebook that betray what Gary is really up to and indicate he's likely already had encounters with the creatures. For example, he writes, To know the ceiling of man's mind is to know the full power of these creatures, but how to prove it to them, how to make them believe. I will remove the drapes and unlock the doors. Gary ends up getting kicked out of the house, however, we later discover that Don secretly let him stay, hidden away in the cellar. By the time Mallory and Olympia give birth, Don is thoroughly brainwashed by Gary, and Don opens up the blinds in the house, which results in the death of everyone except Mallory. Unlike the film, Tom also dies at this point in the novel. 
By contrast, in the movie, Douglas is skeptical of Gary throughout and even attempts to shoot him to protect everyone in the house. However, he ends up dying at Gary's hands. Overall, the subplot with Gary runs for much longer in the book and his reappearance when Mallory and Olympia give birth is a huge surprise as it assumed he'd left the house a while ago. Something the book provides more detail on is whether the creatures can also affect animals, and there are some grisly passages which prove that yes, they can. For example, there's an especially horrific scene where Mallory and a dog she's with encounter a creature and the poor dog kills itself. Another particularly bloody scene in the book occurs on the river trip when a flock of birds see one of the creatures. The birds go insane, attack each other and kill themselves, which sends down a wave of dead, bloodied birds onto the boat, spattering all over Mallory and the children. Given the movie toned down some of the more horrific elements from the novel, I can see why these animal suicides also weren't included. Another detail the movie changes from the original book is Mallory's decision about who should look so they can safely navigate the river. The film spends a good bit of time building up to Mallory's dilemma of choosing which child will take on the potentially suicidal mission of looking when they reach the rapids. It's a heartbreaking moment with some great acting by the young actress who plays girl. I'll do it. Though of course, Mallory decides against the plan and tries to figure out a way for everyone to survive. In the book, however, they don't have to travel through any river rapids. Instead, Mallory's predicament is that she needs to look when the river splits into four channels as she has to take the second from the right in order to make it to the sanctuary. Book Mallory actually plans to look very quickly herself when this moment comes, but it's just as much of a dangerous moment as what happens in the film because it comes just as their boat bumps into the creature I mentioned earlier. Although her time in the film is short, Mallory's sister Jessica, played by Sarah Paulson, certainly makes an impact given the rapid, horrifying nature of her death after seeing one of the creatures. Jessica's early demise quickly isolates Mallory and demonstrates just how high the stakes are. That works for the movie, however in the book, Mallory's sister, whose name is Shannon, survives a lot longer as the apocalypse doesn't happen so suddenly. In fact, Mallory and her sister hunker down at their home for several months until one day the corner of a blanket covering a window comes loose and Shannon sees one of the creatures. The loss of her sister makes Mallory feel vulnerable, so she drives to a home that's acting as a safe house where people are trying to survive together. The movie understandably wants to set the tone much more quickly, so it brings on the apocalypse in a very short time frame. And on top of that, rather than a place organised to take people in for shelter, Greg's house is simply a normal home that a few survivors are lucky enough to find more or less randomly. Bird Box ends on a fairly optimistic note where Mallory, boy and girl arrive at the School for the Blind and discover that Dr Lappin has also made it there. In the book, although Mallory and the children do reach the safety of the school, the river journey has been even more harrowing than in the movie, with Mallory getting slashed in the shoulder by a wolf and also passing out at one point. And the book's final chapter is also much darker and bittersweet because what Mallory discovers at the school is that some of the residents have gouged out their own eyes so they can't be tempted by the monsters. In the novel, Rick tells her that many years earlier the school's security was much weaker and a creature managed to break into the building resulting in many deaths. The community then decided to blind themselves to avoid any further risk from the creatures, although since then they've improved their security and now new arrivals no longer do that. By the way, the original screenplay for the movie also had a different but similarly horrific alternate ending to the one we saw in the final film, and you can tap here for all the details on that, plus other deleted scenes from the movie. So what did you think of Bird Box? And if you've read the book, how do you feel about the way it was adapted? Let me know in the comments below. If you're new here and enjoyed this, then do subscribe and hit the bell to get all my new videos. Coming up next week, I'll have videos on glass. And in the meantime, you can tap left for seven monstrous things you missed in Bird Box or tap right for the movie's alternate ending and deleted scenes. Thanks for watching and see you next time. yippee ki movie lovers.